what made you decide to become you? What made you decide to you know, start blogging? Uh, yeah. uh, so it is something I wanted to do when I started playing like 10 years ago. But I just didn't have the confidence back then. I tried to like get in front of a mic, get in front of a camera. I just couldn't do it. And then also filming was really tough back then at the uh, casino. I got caught quite a few times. So it just never happened. But I did bust my bankroll when I first played. I actually built it up to like twenty to 30000 And my spending habits were just out of control. Like eating out four times a day. Welcome to the Poker Talk podcast. Just real people and real players. So, uh, you're technically guest number four. Guest number three was down somewhere around where you are now. But, uh, okay. uh, uh two problems. One, my dumbass forgot to hit record. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> his, his connection kept dropping like crazy. He would just, you know, freeze and be like in the most inopportune times. Be like mid sentence oh, and just try. <laughs> it's like, um, Tim, hey Tim. So, but uh, he's he's a uh, pro dealer, and uh, uh, so he was down there for uh, the event at the Seminole for two weeks. At the, okay, yeah, the that just ended last night. Yep. So he was down there for that. So he should be uh, heading back up uh, home today. So okay. I mean, he's been dealing 20 plus years, his YouTube videos of him uh, dealing big events and stuff. Oh, cool. So, yeah. So, yeah, he's, he's, he's a really good dealer. So, so he, he does the tournament yeah. circuit, but like works it. Uh, he, well, he did for a long time. He actually, he was primarily dealing at best, but he dealt the tournament circuit for years. Then uh, him and his wife had kids. So he decided to, you know, try to stay local. So he was dealing best, but uh, Jack's. Okay. Uh, for many years and then just kind of got burnt out. Uh, so he, uh, he's also into uh, horse racing and stuff like that, uh, from the horse ownership side. Okay. So, nice. Um, but he still occasionally does some of the larger events and stuff like that. So he'll yeah. be back down there, I guess, April or May or something like that. End of Feb. Event. I think Feb 18th is the next one. It, it might be that soon. I don't know if he's yeah. doing that one. I think there's one a little later in the year that's a larger one that he's doing. So, okay. But, yeah, uh, I just so. missed it. I messed up my schedule. I should have gone, should have come down here first and then gone up to Jacksonville after. Yeah. See, I love you. Yeah, I don't really follow the tournament circuit, so <laughs> I just never know. Yeah, I mean, they're everywhere. I mean, right now, Tampa's got uh, an event starting up uh, here in a couple of days. Uh, actually, I think okay. it starts today. So I'm heading over there probably Thursday. Well, that would be tomorrow. I haven't decided either tomorrow or Friday. I'll head over and uh, do the uh, try the daytime. Uh, oh, yeah. Buy a few uh, bullets. 200,000. Yeah. Nice. So try the 200,000 200, guaranteed uh, to start, and we'll see where it goes from there. Yeah. So, and then Best Bet Jacks, they've got uh, theirs uh, just starting. Or just ending this this weekend is their main event, so. Okay. Yeah, I've managed to miss like every single tournament series on my trip. Uh, I got to where's it, Brayton, and one week after I left was their tournament series. Uh, like two weeks after I left Vegas with wins, and then a week after I left uh, the Lodge, they had their sort of like wacky, uh, tournament series. Yeah. And then just missing hard rocks now. So just nailing it. <laughs> you, you, you need a VA to just schedule all the, uh, okay, you need to be here for this series, here for this yeah. series. That's usually when you end up with the crazier games. So, yeah, yeah. Um, I am going to go down to EPT Barcelona and Prague oh, for the nice. um, August. And I think it's October. Yeah. So those be fun. Good luck on those. Yeah, Good thanks. Those. Probably not going to play the tournaments, so. though. Not a tournament like, player? No, I can't do more than like six hours at the table. <laughs> I just get bored. I just want to punt. I, I've ha I've had that experience. Uh, it's, you know, it's, it's becoming accepting of the fact that it's a marathon. So. Yeah, yeah. The longest I've played so far is three days. Uh, haven't gotten any deeper than that, unfortunately. 
well, although like 72 uh, hours straight uh no not straight uh, you know oh okay you know three days you know three days in a row and there was a break in between uh the day one and the day two and then the day three so and yeah some money on it but not as much as i would uh would hope to have and then there's been a few where you know it was a little bit higher up in the money so yeah it's been quite a few years uh and then mom didn't even exist uh the last oh, what time didn't I exist went that deep hmm? well, oh, what didn't were exist? wsop circuit events uh yeah some of the larger ones but at that okay. point in time hendon mob didn't exist 20 years ago oh uh, they oh wow were logging a lot of stuff yeah so, um wsop didn't even keep really good records they've got one final table that i did i think it was on a thousand dollar event uh, made the final table and was the first to go out uh, ace king versus kings so that oh. was kind of frustrating yeah <laughs> yeah absolutely so but hey that's poker yeah yeah so um yes this stuff will be included uh at some point, I'm probably going to create a formal introduction uh, to, to start things off. But my, my goal, uh, I'm also part of, oh, you just saw a black blob go by. That's yeah, one so of my pets. Um, that's Obsidian. Uh, he's one of the window kitties. Loves to sit in the window. But yes. uh, part of a real estate-related podcast, we like to just get get a conversation going and somewhere's in there. You know, we, 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 we officially cut from that point forward and say, okay, this is, and we throw an intro in there somewhere. And yeah. It, uh, you know, it's just more relaxed, you know, not super formal or anything like that. Uh, you know, and especially with poker, I mean, this is one of the things I love and, uh, you know, what, what uh, I'll, before I give my full end statement, what, what do you love about poker? Like what, why poker? Oh, so. I started when I was like 20. I just got into it because uh, I started working at a casino. Mm -hmm. And the first thing they tell you to do is, you know, oh, why don't you go check another casino, uh, see how it is and how the player experience is. And I was like 20. I got addicted to blackjack. <laughs> I think I lost like all the money in my bank at the time, which was like $300. It was a lot to me. But like, mm -hmm. I couldn't stop playing. And then uh, I met, met a few friends at the casino that I worked at. I like, oh, why don't you uh, come try to play poker with me? I was like, all right. I sort of understand the rules and so we played 10 cent 25 cent three hand in his living room i just got crushed there but at least it was only for like 20 to 40 dollars a night uh and then i saw a high stakes poker one of those youtube videos where tom Dwan was just being an animal like mm. re-raising eight six suited pre-flop just triple barreling it off i was like you know i'm gonna try that so i started trying that and then just started cleaning up at the that home game uh from there one three was a big jump or i think it was one two back then yeah, I started playing one two at the casino with my friends, and I just went super passive again. And then something that just clicked. I was like, I'm gonna try to be aggressive for one session. I had like a really big win. And I was like, wow, I just made like over a thousand dollars in a day. Why am I working this shit job for like eighty dollars a day? And then with like my <laughs> whatever two thousand dollar bank, I <laughs> went and played one two full time. Yeah, so did that there for two years. That answers so many questions. Yeah. <laughs> It's one of the things I love is you you can sit down and you can be uh, and be sitting with anybody. You know, yeah. So you know there there have been you know I, I sit with you know a whole bunch of nobodies just like myself. You know nobody special. You know and a trade show. Uh, you know at the time, and uh, you know with, within a particular sub niche of the IT field. You know very you know very small pond. I was no kind of a big player in that pond. Outside of that. Nobody knew me, so that's fine. Just sitting there playing poker, and there's this one guy next to me, and for the love of me, I cannot recall his name, but I played with him most of the day, and this guy was good. And I just started watching. I, you know, I just, you know, he was, you know, if, if someone's raking in pots constantly, do what they're doing. So and this yeah. is in tournament play, so I see what he's doing. I start mirroring it, and I think he figured out real fast that, you know, I was, you know, picking off but the other thing everybody kept walking up to him hey 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 you know everybody seemed to know him this guy must travel the circuits a lot or maybe he's you know one of the locals uh and we're down at tunica mississippi but he didn't yeah. sound like a tunica mississippi kind of guy he sounded like a brooklyn guy uh or new jersey or something like that so 
I get done, it's like two thirty, three o'clock in the morning. I go back to my room, uh, you know, with, uh, the guy that uh, I'm bunking with who was my business partner at the time. And it's got W, you know, old school WSOP, you know, playing on, you know, ESPN at the time. And there the guy is playing and, you know, big final table. And yeah. he's, you know, one of the five people left at that point. I'm like, holy shit, I've been playing with this guy all day. So you just never know. Yeah. Oh, so he's like away. a full on like sponsored pro. Oh yeah. The, you know, and it's, you know, it's, he doesn't play much or I don't see him much anymore. You know, this is, you know, 20 years ago. Uh, and he was already an older gentleman at that point, but just everybody knew him. And I'm embarrassed to say that I didn't, but yeah. we also didn't have the, the overwhelming amount of content available back then. Yeah. You know, we didn't have yeah. YouTube yet uh, or anything like that. So funny thing, do you know how YouTube started? No. What was its original purpose? What was it? A dating site. No kidding. They originally created it as a, da- a video oh, yeah? dating site that didn't work. Thank God. Yeah. If you ever want to like up your YouTube game, which you, you know, you do great. So not, not picking in any Thank way, you. but, um, the, there's a couple of great books, uh, the guys, uh, behind think media and, uh, s- some of the others, uh, they've got some great books. Um, you know, studied with Mr. Beast, helped Mr. Beast, learned with Mr. Beast in the process of Mr. Yeah. Beast becoming Mr. Beast. And they like literally wrote the book on YouTube. Yeah. Oh, so, here, just let me look it up real fast. Yeah, I've seen it. Any, anybody like... who's looking for stuff like this, I mean, this is, uh, this is the type of content uh, that you want. Um, poker books, poker books. Uh, Daryl Eaves and Jimmy Donaldson, um, okay. YouTube formula. That's one of them. And then, uh, YouTube secrets by Sean Cannell and Benji, Benji Tra- Travis, uh, what Sean Cannell is one of the key figures behind, uh, I think media. So he just started off doing like equipment reviews, but he's been doing it oh, so wow. long and got involved uh, with Mr. Beast along the way also. And just, you know, it's crazy, but they, you know, they started out with the history of it uh, and such like that. So, <laughs> so you just never know. Wow. Yeah. That's pretty crazy. He, he just like studies the algorithm and just crushes it. And it just, and it changes, you know, constantly. Yeah. So apparently the, apparently the latest thing I was just watching a video just before I hopped in here or starting to watch a video is, you know, everybody's saying, oh, I'm quitting YouTube. I'm quitting YouTube. There's mm-hmm. like hundreds of posts by you know, big YouTubers that are doing that. And it's like something about that just tells me this is clickbait. Why would you stop making money? Just are any of those people actually watching. quitting? I have doubts. That's why I said, I think it's all clickbait. <laughs> yeah. Cause a lot of, I saw that on Reddit, like a bunch of like big YouTubers were starting to quit, but Supposedly. you know, they're actually quitting because you see that in a title so often. Yeah. Like I'm quitting YouTube. And at the end of the video, there's, no mention of them quitting mm-hmm. at all. Yeah. 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 If this isn't achieved or if this isn't achieved, I'm unhappy about this. Bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I have to say, I'm impressed. You managed to get at Bluffalo Sam on, on multiple platforms uh, for your social media handle. What, nice. what made you pick that name? I mean, Sam, was... obviously, I'm assuming that's your name. Yeah. Yeah. That yeah. one goes without saying. Uh, I heard it like sometime 10 years ago on some random YouTube video. I heard someone say Bluffalo and I just thought it was so funny. I wish I could find where I saw it because hmm. they want to watch it again, but I heard it somewhere. <laughs> the uh, the uh, guys on the uh, Best Bet stream the other night, it's Bluffalo Sam. I like that name. He's welcome on this stream again. <laughs> of course I am. <laughs> <laughs> so and heck, I think if I recall correctly, uh, that was uh, early on, uh, just before you doubled up. So and it's one of the hands that I picked to go over uh, here in a little bit. So I think it was like twenty three minutes. I don't remember doubling up. I yeah. think I, I rivered a set and I doubled up. Yep. You yeah. turned it. You turned a set of jack. Turned and doubled up. That was river? Yeah, yeah. Turned. Yeah. Um. So did you ever do college at all? No, no. Uh, I did like half a semester to try to finish my high school math and then failed that. Okay. So 
That's why my math is just so terrible. I just struggle like adding the pot together. Every time I'm in the tank, yeah. 90% of it is just me trying to figure out what the pot is. I'm not Three, thinking, I already know what I'm going to do. I just like, I need to get the number I need to bet. A banana. Why is there a banana in the pot? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. I, I can relate. So I think um, tournament would make that much harder too. It's. Six of one F does the other. I mean, it's, it's the same. You got to keep track of what, you know, have a good idea of what they're starting with, you know, as much as possible. I try not to go all in. You know, I try yeah. to only, you know, if I'm calling someone's all in, I'd prefer to beyond, you know, having a great hand, especially if it's free flop, I'd prefer to have them covered. So that at least I've got something left, uh, you know, yeah. sh should things go bad, but, uh, yeah, it's, uh, you know, it, and it also comes down to, you know, it's easier early on because you know how much everybody just started with. So, yeah. Also, like the, the stacks, you know, you got some like this, some like yeah. this, none of them are ever in 20s. So I yeah. can't just glance over, like, yeah, all right, that's... Yeah, it depends on, uh, you know, you can tell people who play a lot. They generally keep their chips organized. And then yeah. you have, uh, you know, the, the newer players, they're in stacks of 10. It's like, okay, well, at least I can kind of make sense. Then you have people who just have, you know, stacks up here just because they're putting it all together. Yeah. You know, oh, you've got big denominations down there on the bottom, dealer. Can you fix that, please? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I already got where did you start playing? Uh, so that's pretty cool. Um, here's the kicker. What made you decide to become you? What made you decide to, you know, start blogging? Uh, uh, so it is something I wanted to do when I started playing like 10 years ago, but I just didn't have the confidence back then. I tried to like get in front of a mic, get in front of a camera. I just couldn't do it. And then also filming was really tough back then at the uh, casino. I got caught quite a few times. So it just never happened. But I did bust my bankroll when I first played. I actually built it up to like 20 to 30,000. And my spending habits were just out of control, like eating out four times a day. I'm like, you know, I just bluffed like $1,800 today. What's a $500 hoodie? I don't need a $500 hoodie. <laughs> but yeah, so I went on like a little bit of a downswing. It wasn't even too bad, maybe like 15 buy-ins. And then from there, I just kept punting and spending. And then it was gone before I knew it. And then so eight year break, I came back to poker. And this time I just thought, you know, I'm going to vlog it this time. It also like will help me get to the tables and actually play to put out content. So it is, you know, they both help each other. So what did you do during that eight-year break? Oh, quite a bit. I was in the army for three years. Uh, traveled to Australia, New Zealand for three. Bartended a lot. Did some cocktail competitions, and then got into real estate over the last would be in two years. Yeah, real estate agent, real estate yeah. investment. Yeah, real estate agent. Okay, I did that for a while myself. It's pretty much a law in the state of Florida. Boot floor, really? here's your driver's license. Here's your realtor's license. Yeah. yeah. Go buy your own house, sell a house, sell your relatives a house or two, and then yeah. go away. You know, go do something else. Yeah. yeah, I, guess, yeah. I, I think there's more realtors per capita here than there are actual residents. Um, it's, uh, that's, it's vicious. That's in Florida. <laughs> yeah. It's crazy. <laughs> I can I see it. It's really nice, poker, though. You know, does that at some Pardon? point? Uh, I think anybody who plays poker uh, seriously, you know, they do something entrepreneurial. Real estate is yeah. generally a very entrepreneurial effort. Oh so yeah, a lot. Yeah, although a lot of people find out, oh crap, it's not just you know, get a license and you know, make tens of thousands of dollars every day. No, it's a no, it's a cold a calling, door knocking, just yeah, it's a pain in the butt. Yeah, they got. I come from an IT background, so I ended up uh, uh, handling uh, sales management in the back end of the uh, brokerage for a few years. Uh, from mm. a friend who also is uh, very much so a poker junkie, and I'll you'll probably see an interview uh, with Steve here at some point in time soon. He's, okay, he, he's he's won uh, won a few events and stuff like that. And very into fitness. He's got a Instagram channel now that's very focused on fitness, and it, it's just blowing up. Uh, nice. between uh, Instagram and TikTok. So uh, I'll, uh, I plan to have him on. So, 
but yeah, real, real cool guy. Uh, you know, real chill. Um, I can't, I, I have nothing bad ever to say about Steve. So I'll let you nice. know when that pod, you know, when that episode's out. Yeah, so, please do. I haven't even asked him, but I know he'll be on. He'll be, oh, hell yeah. <laughs> yeah. He, he, he's just got that personality. You know, when I worked yeah. for him, uh, you know, for a couple of years, every Wednesday, we were at uh, the cigar bar, cigar and whiskey bar. And it's the only day of the week they have food and they go out and they buy huge uh, sirloin. And sirloin, you okay. Slice it up. Yeah. And, you know, there's always some sort of potato on the side, either mashed potatoes or a baked potato and something green on the side. And just, yeah. you know, you have no choice. You either, you know, you buy it, you know, you're in or you're not. And, you know, there'd be a line of people waiting for this and this place packed up. So you're sitting there, everybody's smoking cigars. Most people are drinking. I stopped years ago. Uh, so I got my soda water and, you know, but just amazing steaks. Whoever was cooking the stuff for them knew their thing. So. That's yeah. a fun way to spend Wednesday evenings. Oh, yeah. I, so, I do love a good cigar and yes. steak. Yeah. Yes. And I'm sure that's going to alienate some people. That's fine. Uh, the, the, this channel is for people who like steak, preferably like bacon. Cigars, drinking, that's all optional. Coffee is not. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm, I, I'm here to have fun. Yeah, whatever works. I sit at yeah. the table. You got people, and I'm sure you've seen this. They're sitting there. You got people eating the sushi with the chopsticks, people eating the burger with the chopsticks. My buddy Steve would be sitting there eating Cheetos with the chopsticks because they don't want to touch the food with their hands because those chips get disgusting. Oh, they're so <laughs> gross, man. They are just disgusting. I've gotten better with chopsticks after seeing that. It's like, you know, that makes so much sense. Yeah. Yeah. I don't eat anything with my hands at the table. Yeah, uh, that or I will bring uh, like uh, the the gloves, you know, those doctor gloves. I'll oh, buy yeah. Sam's Club and, you know, I'll go wa you know, wash my hands either way, but I'll have one hand that I'll eat with and the other hand that I'll play with and do everything with until the food's gone. Yeah, yeah, if I do I'm the same. At the table. And it depends on how long the session is or if it's tournament or whatnot. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I started like going away from the table, just finding a nice place to sit down and eat. But then if I do that, I kind of just, get back to the table in half an hour. I'm like, I'm just going to go. I'm not yeah. into this anymore. So I, I got to find some sort of balance there. Mm -hmm. Hey, maybe that is your balance. You know, if, if it's yeah, but my you from like losing. Or, I mean, I mean, is it, uh, does eating cut your energy? A little bit. Yeah. Change of focus. Yeah. 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 There you go. Maybe, maybe that's uh, something to follow then. If your focus isn't there. Or at least my experience, if my focus isn't there, I really shouldn't be at the table. Yeah. So. Yeah, I don't mind the shorter sessions, but it's when it takes, you know, two hours, like, to get down there, wait for the table and get on, and then you only play yeah. three, and then half hour drive back home. Well, yeah, that's yeah. painful. Yeah, yeah, that's one thing I miss. I lived in Jacksonville for several years and just moved down uh, to the Orlando area, so really close to the Disney parks and such which my kids are ecstatic about. Yeah. But, uh, I lived 10, maybe 15 minutes, depending on traffic, away from the Best Bet Poker Room on Monument, uh, where you Ooh. were playing. Yeah. So, I was able to get over there, a heartbeat, half an hour to the one on the other side of town, 45 minutes to the one down in St. Augustine once it opened. Uh, you yeah. Know, 20 on traffic, some days a little bit more. Yeah. But yeah, they've got three of them there in the area. So all, all owned by Best Bet. So, yeah, it was fun. It was fun. I missed that. So now it's uh, an hour and a half over to Tampa. Oof. Uh, about an hour Oof. and a half, almost two hours over to Daytona, uh, or three and a half hours down to the Hollywood and any of those uh, down in that area. Yeah. So that's, that's quite a track. Yeah. For those, I will probably like, you know, for the one coming and the next one coming up, I'll probably take the bright line down and just Airbnb it down there. So What's the bright line? Bright line is a new higher speed uh, train. Oh, service, cool! Service uh, that right now goes between Miami and Orlando, and the next step is they're building out track to take it all the way over to Tampa, uh, the Tampa okay. St. Pete area. And then I would hope they take it up to uh, Jacksonville, and then all the way over to Pensacola at some point in time. 
Yeah, yeah that'd be cool. Sense. I think Texas needs that. Yeah. At, at least among the the uh the the tribe the three. Yeah. 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 If they had that, oh, cool. I would buy a place in Dallas so quick. Yeah. I've got a lot of friends in San Antonio and Houston. Not so much in Dallas, but yeah. Yeah. With, with all the card rooms down there, it's just it's crazy action. Yeah, so, yeah, there's a lot of action. Speak, the food's great. Speaking of crazy action down there, you 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 started out with a goal. You know, your videos had, you know, which you're gonna have to find something new now. What are you gonna do? Uh, you know, one hundred to one hundred thousand and you hit your goal. Congratulations. Thank you. you were, yeah. uh, in Texas at the time, correct? Uh sorry, say again. Uh you yeah, I was in Texas. Texas. I finished point. off on my last day in Texas, actually. Okay. So tell us about that. Uh, let's see. I think I got to Texas with 50,000 in the roll and ended with 108 after about, I think this might've been around two months. Wow. Pretty big jump. Yeah. Yeah. Really good. Two months like Dallas. I played there for two weeks and I only booked one losing session on the very last day. And I, to be honest, I just punted like crazy. It was a really bad session. I didn't even feel like playing, but I had like six hours left on my um, little time card. I was like, I don't want to mm -hmm. waste six hours. It's seventy dollars, so I dusted off thirty eight hundred. <laughs> <laughs> Spent thirty eight hundred dollars to not waste what <laughs> seventy <laughs> yeah dollars. <laughs> yeah, and then a few days later, went down to the lodge, uh, played in the first live stream, mm -hmm. lost about four thousand there, which wasn't too bad because it was a five, ten, twenty five game. So that's not bad and ran pretty poorly too. Uh, then played at Peaks, lost another thousand or so on their two live streams. Well, I had a lot of fun on those two. And then I think the roll was down to like 50,000 from there, just blew up. Yeah, so Champions was 10K. And then I played a 5, 10, 25 game of the Lodge, won another 10, and then back to Champions and won like nearly 30,000 over the three days. Wow. Yeah, just some insane runs there. Impressive. So what, what's next? What's the next challenge? I don't have another challenge right now. I'm probably just going to keep doing some more vlogs. I, I enjoy doing the full session reviews. It's where like, uh, I note down every single hand I play, even if I just raise jack four suited from the button and everyone folds, I'll still put that in there. So I enjoy doing those, but they are a lot of work. So I think mm -hmm. I'm going to do a few more of those while I'm down here and I'm heading to Europe in a bit, but I don't know. Poker's going to take a little bit of a back burner for the next few months. I'm still going to try to get a, like a weekly video, but it's not going to be as much volume. I'm doing East coast trip back to Canada with very little poker. And then I'm going to backpack around Europe for a month and a half. Sounds like a great way to recharge. Yeah. Yeah. I need a little poker break. <laughs> yeah everybody does how long did it take you to achieve that like what was the full time for me uh i started online late april and then i got to the live tables probably mid-march so about nine to ten months not bad it's really good i thought it was going to take at least three years yeah yeah i was ex i was expecting you to say uh you know multiple multiple years I honestly just found you, I think it was about three or four months ago. And, okay. It's like halfway uh, just, through. Yeah. YouTube just happened to pop you up in my feed a few times. I kept seeing nice 100 to 100,000, 100 to 100,000. Hmm. It's like, who is this guy? I said, sorry, my cat sent me out the window, decided to scratch and sound like someone's banging on the window. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, cats. YouTube kept suggesting you. And, uh, so, you know, thank you, YouTube. And, uh, so I, I finally gave you a chance and it, uh, you know, you, you were entertaining. I like your style. Some people, uh, do vlogs and they're just, you know, boring as hell. And, yeah. And, uh, you know, sorry to, sorry to them, but, uh, you know, you, you've got a good style, you know, you, you've got a good flow, you, you know, you show a really good detail uh of things and you, you know you explain your thought behind a lot of the stuff that's where a lot of them just ah hey, so i did this i did this no no, no thought or logic or reason yeah. behind it and uh it's like okay you know give it a chance so I, you know did the follow and you know went forward from there so it was uh yeah, impressive i'm up there on uh, your stack 
Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I don't know what's next. Would be nice to start playing, you know, 25, 50 and 50, 100 comfortably. But that's, that's probably a, a while away. I'm going to start using a little bit better bankroll management with these very large games. Mm -hmm. Just a little bit better. Nothing yeah. crazy. Yeah. Now, do you ever uh, put yourself up on State Kings or are you 100% judged on your own? No, I, I just want to play all me. Okay. Yeah. If I had money on State Kings, I just think, why don't I just play half the stakes? An easier yeah. game. Yeah. So do you have, you know, is it just, you know, do you, are, are you against it? You know, just anybody doing that or, you know, like, no, no, I don't want to get stake, get stake. I know, I know Ramp Rampage is on there a lot. Uh, yeah. Mentions that he sells a little bit of his action. And uh, I think Brad Owen's done it a couple of times and a few yeah. of the others. I may do like 1%, just something so like you can have a sweat. Yeah. But anything more than that, probably not. Yeah, it would just be for the entertainment value. Most I've done is just uh, trading action uh, with friends. Uh, you know, where where we're both playing the same tournament, and there's been a few times where it worked out well for you know both of us. Yeah, uh, or or a group of us a couple of times because uh, five of us got into the money out of six. Oh, so. solid. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so oh, yeah, that's that beautiful. Was a blast. Yeah. So uh, I'm blessed. My wife fully supports me playing poker as long yeah. as it's not just a string of, you know, always a string of losing sessions. And, you know, she's, you know, I've been blessed that she's been that way since, uh, you know, we got married entrepreneurial, you know, I was you know, in business with her brother. So, you know, she fully, you know, supports that. Thank God. And yeah. you know, as, as I started getting uh, more and more into poker, you know, as long as I'm semi-consistent uh, with winning and, and such, and, you know, don't lie about it. Uh, you know, you get some people sneak around. She's supported a hundred percent. Do you have a significant other that's supportive of, uh, what does your family think? Uh, and such like that. Like, uh, so, dad, I'm going to go play poker. <laughs> so no significant other. Uh, yeah. my parents don't really care for it too much, but yeah, it's, it's nothing beyond that. It's not they hate it or anything like that, but it is what it is sort of thing. <laughs> it's like, all right, hey, you're going off doing with this. It. Just, yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm sure the more successful you are, the the I, I would hope the happier they are. Yeah, yeah. I, I kind of don't tell my mom about the uh, bigger games because she just doesn't. She's very conservative with money, so like hearing me blast off for thousands of dollars is not what she wants to hear. Makes sense. Makes sense. Yeah. Do you know if they follow you on YouTube and watch it at all or. No, no. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, do you have any other career aspirations beyond poker? Or do you just want to play poker for the rest of your life? Um, nothing really like striking me right now that I really want to pursue. Everything that I do wanted to pursue would be like back to seven years of uni or something like that. Uh, my, my goal right now is just to build up investments and get to a point where if I wanted to, I could retire as early as 40. So that's what I'm working towards right now. And then it would be nice to kind of travel around, play the occasional poker game here or there. But yeah, that's my goal for now. That's an outstanding goal. Be retired by 40 and live off of the investments. Yeah, yeah exactly. So um, next up. I, I gave you the option, uh, you know, uh, when we were talking beforehand, uh, you know, going over some hands and, uh, you know, said, uh, you know, gave you that option. Uh, you said you'd be, uh, willing to look at some of the best bet actions. So let's go ahead. Yeah. And I'm going here that window. Um, and we have, uh, for those who don't know, uh, youtube.com at Buffalo Sam. Um, that's at B L U F F A L O S A M. Uh, this is uh Sam's channel. A uh, lot of great content on here, uh, definitely uh, entertaining. Um, I've learned uh, plenty, uh, and just you know, great hours of entertainment in general. And uh, it, it's going to be interesting to see videos without the 100 to 100,000 bakerel challenge uh, because once again, he achieved it. Uh, goal achieved yeah i'm really glad i achieved it on that last video because building up another what did i lose on that stream Twenty thousand. 
would be uh, <laughs> brutal. I oh, don't think you, I can do did, it by 100 videos. Did you get knocked down completely in rebuy? Yeah. I forgot that. I don't think yeah. I got that one. I got then, I guess, the, uh, the well, I got two hands here that I've queued up. Um, this first one uh, that I'll play. And uh, uh, let me make sure in my settings. Oh, the Queens versus Jacks one. Yeah. Uh, yeah, let me make sure that um, uh, hopefully everybody's able to hear this. If not, I will replay. Um, oh, yeah, share computer sound. Uh, there we go. I need to enable this. I New MacBook. Um, allow. Yes, there we go. Turn off voice isolation. So, um, just uh, upgraded from a uh, 2020 MacBook Air to a 20 uh, brand new uh, MacBook uh, Pro M3. So, uh, oh, loving it. Such a but every, every time I turn around, there's like this feature needs to be enabled. This needs to be enabled. Yeah, I thought Time Machine just completely restored all the settings and everything. It doesn't. No, there's so many permissions that need to be redone. It's yeah, annoying. Yeah, yeah. So that's a that's a little bit frustrating. But uh, so I'm gonna play and uh, let me know if you're able to hear the sound here. Also on this, yep. yeah, I can hear. It. Okay, perfect. So if you can hear, it, hopefully, oh, all the recording. So this is the beginning of as you said, Queens and Jess. Yeah, I mean, hybrid. It's not yeah, just uh, took it away. It's not just Sam. It's also Todd. I mean, I'm kind of curious to see how. Um, Sam does play on this table by anyway. Normally I would. Yeah, so I actually made a Especially pretty big with, mistake. Uh, Todd on this, this one, uh, table I too. misremembered a hand before, but when you pause, I'll let you know. Okay. So what mistake did you make? So one of the first hands, um, Todd opened with Queen Deuce suited, and then the guy in seat four, I don't know, can't remember his name, but he three bets, and then Todd made the call with Queen Deuce suited. But I misremember the action as Todd three betting with Queen Deuce suited. So I thought his three bet range was insanely wide with, you know, a suited Queen. Mm -hmm. And, but he, he just called it. So it's a lot different. So when he three bet here, I thought his range was ridiculously wide, like just, you know, 40% of hands. And him and Carson play a lot. So I know that he'd be cold four betting quite light here. But that wasn't the case. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Definitely that's that my not. bad. Yeah. <laughs> I think I messed it up on two hands as well. Okay. We'll, we'll take it live again. Ooh. Cooler situation here. Pocket Queens for Carson. No. Todd's already three bet. Here comes the four bet. Oh boy. Here we go. Let the fireworks begin. What have I really know there's fireworks? So, <laughs> this is a standard fold. Yeah. Well, they were expecting fireworks. Oh, yeah. And I also mixed <laughs> messed this up here. Um, I thought Carson cold called. Uh -huh. When he put the chips in, I had already put in the uh, four bet here. But uh -huh. I was like, oh, Carson actually four bet. And so they allowed me to take back my chips because I made it like 1100 or so. So it wasn't a legal uh -huh. raise. Yeah. So he's like, no, take it back and do whatever you want. Yeah, I hear him in a moment talk about, you know, you're wondering, you know, was that a legal raise that he put in? You know, did he put in enough to even raise? So it was just over the limit uh, for uh, for a legal raise there. Yeah, but it is a live stream. So if you if you genuinely mess up, they're usually quite forgiving. It's not like, oh, this could be an angle. Like you're, you're yeah. on televised. You're not going to be angling like this. Yeah. Yeah, no. Yeah, he, nobody wants to get called out by the entire country that's watching. Uh, yeah, it was a genuine, this like, is a very mishap. unforgiving group that watches this, typically. Okay, nice. <laughs> uh, yeah, they'll, they'll harass the hell out of people. Uh, yeah. I mean, they're funny. I mean, it's, I mean, that's, you know, it's, they're poker players. So, yeah. you know, how poker players uh, can be. So, let's continue. Oh, yeah. He was so focused off. He, he no, forgot no. about the night that Carson stole. <laughs> 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 He's so focused on me. He forgot Carson is Leo. Yeah. It's fine. So it would have been a great that's correct, but we're gonna let him do whatever he wants. Get full. No, do the raise. As you just said, yeah, very forgiving. Properly on land. Yeah, it's a genuine mistake. So, and it's how I would treat someone else too. 
Yeah, and we couldn't even see the. You know, wow, the, here we go, all in. Us, there's your all in. Did we go show off us to the races? We raised the four. No, Carson's well, not going anywhere. <laughs> So we're going to run it once, Max Payne. So who, who decided uh, on the one time? Did you choose or did the I only run once. That? Okay. Unless I'm playing like one, two with a bunch of friends or like, yeah, if it's like one, two, it's just having fun. I'm waiting for a table. I'll, for sure. If you want to run it twice, we can. But anything like two, five or higher, we're running it once. Okay. Makes sense. Fair enough. Yeah, it's it's with five. So I don't know. What a flop. Who? Oh, oh, wow. Sam soon. hits his jack. How much you got? I saw wow. Big double up for Sam. I turns the set. And Kirk uh, just walked hello, in at hello. the tail end of that one. But uh, <laughs> Kirk's also been a very busy guy, and I kind of see why. I've been <laughs> running a lot of chips, guys. So uh, obviously, this <laughs> hand, you're going to tell why. Oh, what a cooler for Carson. Oh. We saw this out in the flesh, and then obviously any diamond is bad for Sam, and somehow part of the miracle two outer there. Yeah, yeah. With, with that, yeah, fly, look at this, just like that. Yeah, you are having a low diamond back diamond up. Diamond diamond That's thing. a say you don't see very often. Yeah, yeah. Like even if I hit, I'm still, you know, gonna dodge eight more outs. Yeah, yeah. That was uh, definitely uh, a, 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 an amazing run out. Do you know? Uh, uh, let's see. The other hand I've got queued up was the very last one. Uh, at what point did you get belted and you have to rebuy? Do you know about what time that was? Um, or we can just say the queen we're... jack hand. Yeah, you mentioned the queen jack hand. Do you know around about what time that was? Uh, someone actually messaged it to me. I think it's four thirty-five ish. Okay. So four hours thirty five ish. So not long before the uh four twenty seven thirty. Four twenty seven thirty. Perfect. Uh, I uh always not for the dealers. Obviously I have one, so I used to the people more tips better in my uh, opinion. But it looks like Harry having exactly a pretty good day there. Yeah, this might not be it. I'm putting them in the blinds. Um, they've got the timestamps down there, though, Obviously, in the uh, comment box. Like a thousand for that type of hand, right? On a brick. Um, yeah, they're 419. Okay, so 419. Oh, okay, yeah, they're Queen Jack versus 10-6, yeah. 419. So. But they don't have the 981. Odd. So just Nine, eight, one. Teams. Yeah, I was near the end. Yeah, we'll give it a couple extra seconds. Arthur, wow, with two pair actually. Good as well. Yeah, yeah, six, yeah. Six, yeah. Two pair for Carson. Yeah. Pretty big bet to seven fifty. Two oh, already in bot, basically. Yeah, on the turn. Ah, so it took us right to the end of it. Arson puts in the yeah. call. I'm not going anywhere after that turn. Wow. That pair of tens plus a plus draw. So you'd built up a pretty good stack by this point. Ten on the river. Oh, uh, I was in for ten at this point. Oh, okay. for Carson. Yeah. He's running hot. And Carson checks one more time. Let's say him hang himself a little bit. Wow. And he put in another vicious statement. A triple barrel. Yeah. I'm just sick of for even thinking yeah. about them. I mean, listen, this YouTube channel's called Buffalo. <laughs> that it is. So, I mean, it checks out. Oh, oh my gosh. Whoa. And a snap call. <laughs> yeah, it was unfortunately a pretty obvious snap. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, Todd. Did you see Todd's reaction? Oh, you got him. Bye. Wow. Oh my God. What up, Carl? Let's have a what a put. Oh, oh my god, what a two. Do the common chip commentators like on live streams like this? this Bro, that was a $31,000 hot yeah. that just happened. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oops. I'm about to do a slow reload of commentators. My god. god. Whoa. Yeah. Where did that go? <laughs> god. I'm assuming you've already watched this. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yo. Sam yeah, I watched this in the parking lot. 
Yeah. Oh, <laughs> Carson just snapped it off. That was God. fast. Yeah. Oh, shit. What did I do? <laughs> so, but, oh, I mean, that's also smart. Go back my... and look. And... God. So, what were what was going through your head? You know, what made you decide to live up to your name, Bluffalo? Uh, well, pre flop oh, standard one. raise the queen jack in the I think believe in the cutoff. Yeah, flop. Uh, bet one third multi way. That one's standard as well. Mm -hmm. Turns a blank. So the only hand that really improves, or so I thought at the time, was 6-5 suited. So you kind of like the green light to go ahead and overbet there. So I fired 2x pot. And my sizes are either 150 or 200, depending on how deep we are. So over here, going to do 2x, and he makes the call. And on the river, when the other 10 came, I originally thought, like, I don't think I should be bluffing here. But... The hands that call an overbet on the turn and be top pair, and then a lot of 10x with it with clubs. And for some reason, I didn't I didn't think about 10 six of clubs like at all. And I thought that he would raise king 10 off suit and pocket fives on the flop a lot. So I just think he didn't have too many strong hands, and a very big bet is going to work like a, an insane amount of the time. Yeah. So I debated between 5,000 and all in. And I thought, what what do I want to do with if I had pocket kings, pocket tens, or king ten here? And I, I just go all in. I wouldn't use five thousand, so yeah, I went with that. But I think that's a mistake. And I think five thousand is a little bit better here, just because if I do have kings, tens, or king ten, it's going to be really tough for him to have a hand because I'm blocking literally everything. That makes sense. Yeah. So it's also easier to get away from at that point. Should he, you know, his obvious move there is well i mean 10 six yeah while it is a boat it's not the best boat yeah he's more likely to still just call as opposed to go over the top there he can't go over the top versus five thousand. Yeah. yeah unless he has pocket tens like, yeah yeah or the pocket kings well he can he just flatted pre-flop in the straddle yeah. so i don't even think he has pocket tens yeah. or like king 10 suited but there's only one combo that I don't, I, I can't, I can't disagree with any of that logic there. So, yeah, the river is just way too big though, considering that my value blocks all of his, uh, calling range. And then when I have bluffs, I unblock his calling range. So, yeah. And what's frustrating is even if that flop had been, you know, King nine, 10, where you flop the straight or turn the straight. Well, yeah, it'd have to be flop the straight, uh, yeah. you know, turn, you know, gives him the two pair and then the river bow. You still would have done the same thing, even if you'd had the straight and you weren't. No, playing. no, I would need a 10 in my hand to go for the overbet. Yeah, yeah straight in the paired sorry. board, I might just go with like 2x. But yeah, because yeah, if I have a 10, I'm more likely to go for the overbet, like ace 10 on king 10 9 if he doesn't raise any point. But I think a straight is. Yeah, the removal's not great. Yeah. Comments in the chat are interesting, also. Yeah. <laughs> um let's see and i wrote down the time for the last one um uh 4 and 50 for the beginning of it so you were the button on this hand or no but i'll no, but it was, was on the uh, pink shirt there. Yeah. Queen of, what was her name? Oh, they were a queen of something. Yeah, queen of her. Is it? I'd never heard of her or seen her before. But, uh, yeah, I'm not sure. Interesting name. I'm not sure if she's an interest. I think she plays here quite often. Everyone everyone knew her. It's plausible. Yeah, you know, she you know, plays you know, at a level sure. I don't play when I'm there. Usually uh, one, two, and occasional two, five. But I've I think she was playing two, five when waiting for the table, but yeah. looks like she plays bigger. Yeah, I've honestly not got a massive bank roll, so mm -hmm. I need to start that challenge and put in the work that it takes, you know, that, that you've yeah. put in. Yeah. <laughs> so, and I like your hand. Eight mana hard, so, I, you know, I think it's a great hand to start. Just, well, it's not the best. Yeah. Also, I thought Carson raised his hand. Aces are kings there. Yeah. I was not paying attention to this stream. 
Let's yeah, see. I thought Carson raised here. Stream. Pardon? The hand or the whole stream? Like the whole stream. I just wasn't paying attention to what was going on, uh, chatting a lot and just, yeah, I thought Carson opened this hand. So that actually changes quite a bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, his flop check raises a lot more credible now. Definitely. See, I'd prefer to be just up against the ace, king, king, queen, aces, kings, stuff like yeah. that uh, with, with the eight, nine. This is, you know, what Carson has there is the frustrating one mm -hmm. uh, to be, to be up against in a situation like this. Um, yeah. But that's usually where I like, you know, mid suited connectors like that. Uh, yeah. Especially, you know, but as you said, it's also paying attention to the hand and seeing you know, what's what's played, who's played what and when and such. Yeah. Um, did you have a little bit of, uh, I'm going to get my chips back from this guy going on at that point? No, no, no. I, I never, ever that? think like that. I just want to play my hand the best I can. That's a positive. I've, I've unfortunately been guilty of that a few times. And uh, Yeah, but it, it never works it, out, does it? No, it, it no. gives precisely the result you would expect. Yeah. So uh, I've, I've learned from it. Yeah. Unfortunately, the hard way. Yeah. Yeah. 1,000. I'm sorry, 1,000. Yeah, since I thought he opened, I thought he'd just have like a lot of um high diamonds here. Mm -hmm. Right, range but check it makes tabs that open the raise. Right, oh, so the gutter, the back door, yeah, flush. But it was tab yeah. that opened pre flop though, right? No, no, no. Um, the guy in seat five opened with ace king. Okay, that's right. That's right. Oh, yeah, Todd called, counter called, the person called. Yeah. He's keeping his foot on the grass. Yeah. Yeah, pretty good card for us. We beat 7 8 yeah. now. And it still gives uh, Todd rope to come along. Uh, it's you know, any 10 there. Yeah. I was really suspicious when he bet here, but. Like I said, I messed up pre-flop. I thought that his value range is going to be a lot of over pairs and then um, flush draws. So when he bet this turn, I just thought 100% he can only have flush draws here because an over pair is never betting here. Yeah. Yeah, so I just want to keep his bluffs in. Hopefully the fire off the river. No, thank you. Wait, wait. So. Check two. So before you play, what was your thinking here? Um, so I definitely want to get Todd to toss in the hero call here. And I think Carson's just got a miss flush draw. It'd be great if he hit the queen, like king, queen of diamonds. And maybe could hero us off. But I don't think my hand is ever worse here. Right, five, six has to raise at some point. If Carson does have five, six, like, so be it. Uh, no one can really have jack 10 except for jack 10 of diamonds. So I'm not worried about one combo. And I think my hand is just best, like a good amount of the time, like enough mm -hmm. to go for go for it. Also, I didn't even want to play this hand. I had to run to the washroom, but it was like my dealer button, and I picked up a hand. I'm like, all right, yeah, that's yeah. one of the questions that I was going to ask you. Yeah, you 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 gave action here, and <laughs> you disappeared. Yeah, that was the first thing I had to go. Yeah. <laughs> Thank God there's a bathroom really close over there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that confused the hell out of everybody. <laughs> like the moment the camera moves away from you. Oh no, Sam. Two pair Carson with the set. And poof, he's off. He's running. Yeah, but like, like Todd started thinking, like, okay, this this is actually going to be a little while. Uh -huh. Oh, wow. I just walked back in here right in time. 
Jack nine for Todd. So Todd has pair of nines, Jack kicker, Sam two pair, and Carson the set. If Todd had like Jack of diamonds, nine of hearts, he would have like the best hero call hand here, I think. Yeah. Yeah, but with a jack of hearts, I think it's a little bit irrelevant. Yeah, because I'm not really going to have jack 10 on the flop unless it's jack 10 of diamonds calling that raise. Yeah. Yeah. Buff Buffalo Sam Buffalo going all in again. He's doing the bill for So probably you've left at this Wait, point. Washington. Yeah, yeah. Right. Oh, my goodness. Sam. Yeah, Sam. What a cooler turn. Her. Yeah. Let's, let's listen to Carson. Okay. Oh, this... oh, yeah, let's put in like oh, all. Just show us it. Yeah, show. Oh, wait. <laughs> so, wait. Where did Buffalo yeah, Sam went to the bathroom the bath room, yeah, right so after he went still... all in here? <laughs> <laughs> wow, there's two them. players behind. So, uh, technically, yeah, I saw the call when I came back, and I was like, "Okay, sweet, I'm back to some... even." Uh huh. Yeah, and I looked over, like, "Oh no, those are eights. I, I thought it was eight seven at first glance. Much money in there. I think the players are more than okay. I mean, just waiting for the call. Shake the top six. Like, I don't think yeah, Sun Jack or Diamond is the only hand with chip. Got to shake the turn. Whatever he got. No, and he would have. So. I would no, have wait, Sam left? left? Yeah, Sam's in the bathroom as we speak. You got like queen, four, diamond. What? Put me in the Talk about you can use the hell out of them all. <laughs> I absolutely <laughs> love it. <laughs> we got a new player coming in. Oh, no, he's just chip runner. No, just chip runner, I think. Yeah. Um, This is very it's bizarre. Very, what a bizarre. Dollars. Why would you leave your hand? You got a call. Uh, no, there is. Oh, oh, dude. He sees the bad that Carson has dates. I uh, does. Okay. So he did come back. You put my card. Kind of. You didn't run away. Yeah, no, Mother totally. Nature no. called. Yeah. I mean, as dealers, guys, we we, we physically. Yeah. He cannot, can't, he can't flip his cards up. Off. They're his cards. But yeah. even then, that's. You're technically not supposed to leave your hand. That's not technically. <laughs> yeah, if they hadn't been a live stream, they probably yeah, would have made it a deadly end. Of oh, I wouldn't do that on a non live stream. I'd probably just check it back once the watch. Yeah. yeah. Right, As you but said, they're, they're, they're a lot more here. forgiving on a live stream. So it looks like we're yeah. now down to four players. <laughs> this is so absurd. Carson so has 45K in front of him. I'm assuming we're just about taking it. notes out of the hand right away. Yeah. Uh, no, no. Uh, no, it wasn't notes. No, because I can just watch the live stream back. So yeah, that uh, at the at the time I imagine that it had to have stung uh, just a bit. Uh, no, no, it wasn't too bad. Yeah. No, was next day, next day, lost? I woke up. I was like, "That was a dream, right?" Please. <laughs> so how much did you actually lose that day? Uh, twenty thousand. Oh, do you, so you did lose twenty. Yeah. So you bought in total for twenty. Okay. At yeah, first, I, five. I thought that's what it was. Because I, when I watched, I saw the Queen Jack. I watched most of the stream, mm -hmm. but then I forgot. And as I was going through, I'm like, "Wait, did he only lose ten thousand? So, no. and, I, and I'm not saying the numbers to try and rub it in or anything. So that hurts. I know. I was in for five. I lose a thousand, and it hurts. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. Um, losses just don't sting too much anymore. It's just part of the game. It goes up and down. That one didn't Especially go that far down, though. And, you know, when, yeah. when you've got the bank roll. Yeah. So. That is uh, some amazing. Any other hands potentially that you want to go over? Or do you have any thoughts? Um, no, I did have a hand on Champions where I kind of did the same line where I shoved like 7x pot. But that's how I actually had it. I got uh, cold, so that, that one helps, you know. <laughs> sometimes sometimes your bluffs don't go well. Sometimes they, your value yeah. does get called, so, you know, it evens out. Sometimes he's not really bluffalo, Sam. Sometimes he's got it, Sam. 
Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, you ever listen to music or podcasts uh, while you're sitting there playing, or do you just oh, no, try never. to focus? Um, no, I just don't like playing music or anything when I'm at the table, but I am on my phone quite a bit. Mm -hmm. So what are you doing? Social media, taking notes. Uh, we'll take notes on books. And I don't take notes on other players, just on my own hands. Okay. But yeah, a lot of social media and message friends, just try and get through the next 20 minutes until I get a playable hand, you know? Yeah. I'll Poker's notice slow. some people are sitting there playing chess. Uh, I see other people, uh, playing, you know, poker on their phones uh yeah, you know, in one yeah. of the online card rooms it's like yeah that guy's a real junkie I need to get oh yeah accounts. <laughs> yeah a lot of uh, i used to do a little bit of like chess on the little app on, at the table but it mm -hmm. just got a bit too distracting yeah yeah i wouldn't be able to play a hand properly i'd be thinking about like my moves and or i get tilted because i just hang a queen in one move and then mm -hmm. it kind of rolls over into poker so i, I yeah. stopped doing that Usually, uh, you know, especially on seeing, you know, as you said, you know, there's a big difference between the cash games and the tournaments. Tournaments, I will a lot of times have books, uh, like oh, Elon yeah. Musk's uh, autobiography. I sat down and bagged, uh, you know, started, uh, I think I was listening to music for like the first two hours of the tournament and had a hand go bad and decided, I, you know, it's the music. My mind's not in the right mindset. So yeah. through on Audible opened up, uh, you know, the first book I saw and I just downloaded Elon Musk's uh, autobiography and sat there and listened to it and just, it, you know, it kind of clears the mind, you know, for me, uh, when I'm listening to that, um, you know, I, I, I focus, you know, I can still focus on who's doing what, but I don't, you know, fixate on the game, especially like if I have a hand go bad in the tournament or whatever. Or, you know, and it's kind of, you know, it fits into that bankroll management, uh, you know, the stack management. If I'm down, you know, 10 big blinds, uh, you know, back in the day, ten, any 10 big blinds and you're all in, you know, with any, any mm -hmm. piece of paint. Now yep. there are people who call a bet and you know, call a raise and, you know, still try to play. Uh, so, you know, kind of stuff like that. It just kind of gets me out of myself a bunch. Uh, okay. So, but that's, you know, that's what works for me, but it's mostly tournaments. I can't do that so much in the cash games. Uh, okay. Like you said, okay. sometimes you get, you got to feel the flow of who's talking about what, because sometimes, you know, you said someone can tilt themselves because of the conversation they're having and someone yeah. starts talking bad about their team or reminds them, you know, one of their teams that they love is doing bad. And it will feed into people's tilt mechanism a lot and you catch them doing stupid stuff. So, you know, it's that exploitive play there sometimes. Yeah. You know, I don't know how I adjust. I don't have any rhyme or reason to it. It just kind of happens. Like, I remember I was playing the win and this guy was just so, so, so tight uh, to start the session. Like, I raised ace high diamonds, got a king high flop with two diamonds. I bet he check raised me. Turn was the king of diamonds, so I made my nut flush. He bet again really small, and on the river, he goes all in for like 400 into 800. And I just folded my nut flush like it was nothing. Mm -hmm. And I was like, he's just got a set. And then like fast forward like three hours later, he three bet me. I called ace jack off. He bet the flop on ace high. Turn was like, it was like ace nine, eight, six. So like really connected board. He fired again. And then on the river, the pot was like 900. And it took him two seconds and he just shoved 2,500 in there. And then I heroed mm. him off that hand. And I'm pretty sure both my decisions were correct. And I have no reason for like adjusting like that. I didn't notice anything different. Nothing like that. I just thought he has it Maybe this time. He doesn't have it right. this time. Yeah. Yeah. Like he was playing so snug. And then all of a sudden I'm like heroing him off for two and a half eggs over down the river with ace jack. <laughs> and did you actually, I mean, did you have a pair or did you just high ace jack? No, no, no. I, I had top pair. Yeah. Okay, top, it was an ace high board. Aces with a jack. Okay. Yeah. So you just had a feeling. Yeah. It's, just had a feeling. Like, got to follow our guts. Yeah. Yeah. I wish I could explain it more, but my thought process was like, you know, I think it's good here. That's it. I agree. I wish I could explain it better. Why well, I do yeah. some of what I do. And uh, it's also getting to, and, and this is where the more you play, the more you get used to trusting your instinct. That's why I think I need to start one of these challenges because it'll force me to play more. 
know, if yeah. I, you know, if I, ha if I have a series of, you know, or uh, several sessions where I'm up, it's like, I'll keep playing. I'll keep playing. I'm happy to keep playing. And if I have one or two bad sessions after I'll stop playing for a month and okay, partially yeah. you know, for me, I'm telling myself it's to regroup mentally and, you know, and it's bankroll management, but the, everything you see, every pro that you book, every, that you listen to every book you read. Variance is variance, and the only way to get through variance is more hands. Yeah. So it's, uh, I'll get better. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just course. like podcasts. I, my goal is to keep getting uh, at least 1% better every time, uh, every, every one that I do. So hopefully yeah. people don't laugh at this one. Uh, the, one of the, one of the players that was there while you were there, Eddie Murskowski, he's a local up in, uh, Jacksonville, uh, wins a lot of events there. Mm -hmm. I'm also pretty good online. He's one of the first official podcasts uh, that I released, first interview. And someone's like, is he kind of slow? <laughs> and I didn't know if he was saying, you know, is he slow? Like, you know, is he mentally a little bit off? Yeah. Which is possible. Uh, you know, I'm, I love poker, but I'm kind of out of my element. My element is IT and data centers. Uh, yeah. So, you know, that I can go deep, uh, you know, in a heartbeat. So, but I'm also new to this type of podcast. You know, my other podcast is a real estate investment podcast, which I've been doing for a few years with some friends. And so, you know, I kind of initially was starting to take it to heart and, you know, I'll still take it as I've got room to improve. You know, like yeah. I said, you know, Think Media, Sean Campbell books, the, the, you know, they're big saying, improve 1% every time. Expect your first 100 episodes to suck. Okay. Yeah, that yeah. one hundred and first one's going to be amazing. Yes. <laughs> you know, so I've got one podcast that I co-host with guys that were over in the four fifties now. We got that shit knocked down. We're doing nice. it. So nice. This is number you're gonna be technically episode number four. So Yeah, because the which one you most appreciated. Uh, I'm I'm honored that that you took the chance to come on to a new podcast, uh newer, newer podcast and help lay the foundation. I definitely want you back uh, as as a guest uh, in the future. So, yeah, for sure. Yeah, uh, thanks a lot for having me. Yeah, most appreciated. Uh, question: what I, I always ask uh, on my other podcast, what books do you read? Like, you know, what do you recommend? What uh, reading? I don't do you read. read. You don't read? No, How about I'm not a reader at all. Yeah, no. Okay. What's your favorite podcast? I don't, I don't, I don't do those either. One, just you no know, podcasts. Okay. No, like I just throw on the radio when I drive. I don't listen to much music. Okay. I, oh, yeah. Just kind of. How about TV? TV. No, just reruns to fall asleep. Yeah. Not a whole lot. Reruns of what? Uh, right now is American dad because I don't have Netflix or anything. So <laughs> just throw on like the YouTube, just play something so I can have some background noise to fall asleep to. YouTube season one, Phineas and Ferb, it's running nonstop live 24 hours a day. Yeah. For some God forsaken reason, they won't play the other three seasons. So yeah, that's, that's, that's usually what I'll pass out to. Nice. And, uh, nice. <laughs> I love that cartoon. Yeah. So, um, well, that's my list of questions. Um, I truly appreciate you coming on. I'd like to thank my sponsor, uh, Bill Henry with, uh, Florida poker. Uh, it's a, uh, poker, it's a group, Facebook group. Uh, there we go. I'll, I'll figure out this message here sooner or later. Uh, but, uh, it's basically focused around Florida poker rooms, Florida poker players. Um, uh, you know, he prefers that you live in Florida and be playing in Florida. If you're in the group, it's a decent sized group. So, uh, stop on by, join in, you play there. Uh, you're obviously playing here consistently. I'm sure, uh, he would love to have you in the group. So, uh, I've got, uh, it'll be episode three audio only. Um, this will be up on YouTube. This will be up on, uh, Apple, Spotify, and eventually just about everywhere else. So, uh, and I'll send you links to it so that, uh, you can point and laugh too. That guy's slow. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, I seriously appreciate you being here. Uh, if if uh, anybody listening, uh, if you like Booker Talk podcast, like what you hear, uh, not a lot of uh, 
BS being shoved down your throats, uh, you know, give us a like subscription, something like that. We'd uh, love to have you, uh, hear some more episodes. And with that, I will. Psst.